over a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom for a state, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling sea. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles all, the flat, unraised spirits that hath dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wooden O the very casks that did affright the air at Agincourt? On your imaginary forces work. Suppose within the girdles of these walls are now confined two mighty monarchies, whose high uprearing and abutting fronts the perilous narrow ocean parts asunder. Piece out our imperfections with your thoughts. Into a thousand parts divide one man to make imaginary puissance. Think when we talk of horses that you see them, printing their proud hoofs in the receiving earth. For tis your thoughts that now must deck out kings, carry them here and there, jumping o'er times, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass, for the which supply admit me chorus to this history, who prologue like your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge our play. God save thy grace, King Hal, my royal Hal. God save thee, my sweet boy, my king, my Jove. 
I speak to thee my heart. I know thee not, old man, fall to thy prayers. How ill white hairs become a fool and jester. I have long dreamed of such a kind man, so serpent swelled, so old and so profane. But being waked, I do despise my dream. Reply not to me with a fool-born jest. Presume not that I am the thing I was. For God doth know, so shall the world perceive, that I have turned away from my former self. And so shall I those that kept me company. Farewell, farewell, divine Xenocrate. Is it not passing brave to be a king and ride and triumph through Persepolis? Touch her soft lips and part. Now entertain conjecture of a time when creeping murmur and the pouring dark fills the wide vessel of the universe. From camp to camp through the foul womb of night, the hum of either army stilly sounds that the fixed sentinels almost receive the secret whispers of each other's watch. Proud of their numbers and secure in soul, the confident and overlusty French do the low-rated English play at dice. The poor condemned English, like sacrifices by their watchful fires, sit patiently and inly ruminate the morning's danger. 
Oh, now who will behold the royal captain of this ruined band? Walking from watch to watch, from tent to tent, forth he goes and visits all his host, bids them good morrow with a modest smile, and calls them brothers, friends, and countrymen. Upon his royal face, there is no note how dread an army hath enrounded him, nor doth he dedicate one jot of color unto the weary and all-watched night, but freshly looks and overbears a taint with cheerful semblance and sweet majesty, that every wretch pining and pale before, beholding him, plucks comfort from his looks, a largesse universal like the sun, his liberal eye doth give to every one, thawing cold fear, that mean and gentle all, behold as may unworthiness define, a little touch of Harry in the night. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tiptoe when this day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall see this day and live old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say, tomorrow is St. Crispian. Then he will strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, these wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, yea, all shall be forgot. But he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England, now abed, shall think themselves a curse they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap, whiles any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day.
Awake remembrance of our valiant dead, and with your puissant arm renew their feats. You are their heir. You sit upon their throne. The blood and courage that renowned them runs in your veins, and your thrice puissant liege is in the very May morn of his youth, ripe for exploits and mighty enterprises. The sun is high. Now, soldiers, march away, and how thou pleasest God, dispose the day. The day is ours. O oh God, thy arm was here. For when without stratagem, but in plain shock and even play of battle, was ever known so great and little loss on one part and on the other? Take it, God, for it is none but thine. What is that castle called that stands hard by? They call it Agincourt. Then call we this the field of Agincourt, fought on the day of Crispin Crispianus. Do we now all holy rites? Let there be sung non nobis and te deum, the dead with charity enclosed in clay, and then to Calais and to England then, where ne'er from France arrived more happy men.
Thank you. Thank you.